Hey, good afternoon and welcome to the first episode of Sunday Drive. Uh, my name is Zim and I have played about 700 VR games over the last five years. Thought I'd come on and share with you some of my some of my knowledge and experience in that space. Today we're talking about tactile transducers, bass shakers, and tactile in general. That support in games, and I think it'll be quite interesting for us to just get into that subject. Alright, well let's go ahead and take ourselves onto the road. Bum, bum. Meanwhile, we're listening to some <laughs> some indie artist trip hop. Thought that would be a nice way to get us into the chill groove of talking about shaking. This guy's like, which way do I go? <laughs> do I go to the right? Oh my. Must be somebody new. Now, I haven't really done too much with the audio. This mix might not be perfect yet. So you're going to be here in the car. You're going to be hearing me. And you're hearing the music, so... Anyway, let's let's get talking. So, why did I feel the need to come and, and, and tell you guys about transducers? You know, in the first place. What is the whole point of that? What is the point of... Uh, what's the point of a transducer? What the feck is it? And why should you care? Why is it important to know about transducers? Even if... And I'll underscore that. Even if you're just playing... 2D games, and you've decided, you know what, actually, VR is too expensive for me right now, I'm not going to get in just yet. Well, that's okay, you can still start to step your toes into an immersive experience with, with a shaker. But there's a whole range of shakers, some very DIY, very do-it-yourself, needing some, uh, some skills. But there's a number of off-the-shelf packages as well that are available to help enhance your every bump and thump. It doesn't matter if you're into music games, FPSs, feeling it is an excellent addition to an experience. And to me, after all these years playing VR games and that, I would say you can't go without some kind of tactile in your life. Now, the one that you choose and when you can work up the money to buy one. That's what I'm gonna try and help help you understand today. Go through the options that I know, that I've tried, that I've tested. And we're just gonna have a bit of a, a chill conversation on those things, okay? So, it's funny when I sat down with this, I was like, I don't, I don't really wanna make a, a vodcast or a podcast. I just really want to have an open-ended conversation and just dump my brain, everything I've learned, everything not to do and to do in the world of transducers. And we'll be switching subjects as we go through the video series. So anyway, let's let's just go ahead and dive in. All right, first off, let's answer the question, what is a tactile transducer? Also known as a shaker, these convert low frequencies usually in the range of 20 to 100 to 150 hertz into a physical vibration. So what does that mean? It means if you if you're playing let's say you're playing Seto Corsa, right? And you hit something on the road, you get force feedback. You might be familiar with this from back in the days of, I don't know, an N64 controller with a rumble pack where you've got something that's doing a little bit of a a gyro off sync and it's generating a shake. Similar to that. But in essence, these shakers, these transducers, were first, I believe, used by musicians to get that studio feel. But it let this guy over overtake me. You know? So you know, that studio feel is, is, is really important. So if you know what it's like to be in a club or whatever, and you've got that, that bass kind of resonating, not just, not just through your ears, but through your body, you get a totally different connection with the music. And it can help you, it can help you develop tracks, particularly if you're a, you know, a dance artist or something like that. So anyway, 
why does it apply to games? Why does it apply to cinema, to films, to movies as well? Right, so let's say you're, you're watching Jurassic Park and big old Mr. T-Rex is thumping, thumping along, you know? Feeling that, let me tell you, is bloody awesome. It is really, really worthwhile, the setup. Now, I'd say that a home cinema setup is more complicated than a PC one. There's some products uh, like the uh, Butt Kicker Gamer 2. It was the first tactile transducer package. And I'll, I'll talk through the different components of that and how you set it up and what you need to make use of it. If it's value, if it's worth the kind of 200, 200 bucks or so that you'd you'd pay for one of those setups, is it worth that? And then there's uh, there's another one that's used that I use regularly when I'm standing, called an M2 sub pack. The latest version of that is the M2 ah! M2 sub pack. Sorry, the sub pack M2X is the latest. I have boned my car. I have wrecked my ride. Shattered the windscreen and everything. Anyway, all right. Let's go through. Let's go rattling through the options. So, how important is tactile to me? Tactile is just being able to to feel every little uh, every little motion, every little you know, every little tremor, every gunshot, every explosion. It's a huge difference. It really, really is. It's a, it's it's a it's a materially huge difference. In the experience that you get it's really different like it it just makes you feel like oh my god i'm there and it like half convinces you we don't have equipment thank god right now where you could taste or you can smell although i've tried the nauseous rift don't look that one up <laughs> that's horrible um but but you know the things that i i wanted to convey in this are 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 really just like it's it's something that it's something that's just gonna gonna really make you uh, make you feel good about a whole collection of titles that you had before it's like if you if you get into good headphones right if you get into good headphones you're not gonna realize you're not gonna realize what you're missing until you feel it until you hear it. It's the same thing here. Absolutely the same thing. So if you think back to playing games with or without, you know, the rumble pack, the shake, the, that that kind of addition, that's the kind of step you're looking at here. But it's crossing maybe 30% of the games that you've got. And why do I say 30%? Why, why would you say, Zim, that it's, you know, not compatible with 70% of what's out there? I just think that the majority of games aren't the majority don't consider or aren't tuned to those base frequencies. So some things that you would expect to work really well with a tactile transducer sometimes don't. But the compatibility is still high enough. It's still high enough that it's 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 a worthy investment. Even at the price of a headset. Because that's what they cost, really. If you look that you can get an Oculus Rift today for 349 pounds, or I think the equivalent in dollars, 350 dollars, then why would you spend, you know, that money on a sub pack? Why why would you spend that on a butt kicker? Right, and that's what I wanted to convey. So anyway, look, this has gotten super waffly. Let me let me put to let me put some evidence out there. All right. If you're playing a, a space game, let's say you're playing Elite Dangerous, and you're boosting, right? You go into Super Cruise. It's a really fast version there. If you're doing that, you feel it. The whole ship rumbles. It vibrates. You feel it. You feel it. You feel it. You feel it. Like you you literally can feel the vibrations in your cockpit. You know, you couple that. You don't even need to couple this with anything else, as long as you've got, uh, you know, a, a tactile transducer hooked up to your setup. It is. It is the number one way, in my opinion, in my experienced opinion, of getting more immersion across the majority of your games. 
tactile transducer. Does that mean they'll all support it brilliantly? No. But for the half or so that do support it, and those that support it excellently, it will change your experience. Now I'm going to talk about the two, the two versions that I've used. There are a multitude of versions out there. But I want to talk to you about what that's... What, what, what are those like? Okay, so let's start off with my experiences. So the butt kicker, and you'll have to go ahead and look this up on the web, okay? I'm not gonna overlay pictures and links and all that. I, I like a relatively unedited video. Uh, I just like you to, you know, it's as if you were sitting in the room here with me and I was telling you about this stuff. We were having a conversation. I want this to be conversational, uh, not demonstrational. So you go look this stuff up if, if, you, if you're interested. This is tickling your fancy, okay? So the first one is called Butt Kicker, one word, spelled as you would expect it. Butt, as in your buttocks, okay? Butt Kicker. And the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 is a package of a vibrating tactile transducer that looks like a ball on a beam essentially, with a, a kind of C-clamp, a kind of C-clamp at the other end. And that clamp clamps to a vertical rod. The vertical rod is, in, is present in most office chairs and needs kind of three or four inches of travel to be able to clasp and hold tightly to that vertical rod on your on your office chair. So imagine if you just reached out with your hand and made a fist around um, the piston that supports you. The little I don't think it's it's not hydraulic, but the um, the piston that supports your office chair. If you were just to grab that with your hand, that's how this thing attaches. And then if at your elbow there was a large ball that was shaking, boom, you've got the idea in your head. That's how that's how this thing vibrates. Not only the base of your chair, but up the back, through the arms as well. So depending on how much how much body coverage you have, a butt kicker will give you arms, butt, back vibration. So let's say let's say you're sitting there with some friends and you're you're talking away. You got one friend who's got a particularly bassy voice. Um, does this does this does this thing kind of filter out? and discern the difference, the different frequencies so that it doesn't pick up voices. It actually doesn't. It doesn't. So if you have a friend with a with a nice deep voice, you're going to hear it, you're going to feel it. Okay? Good for you. <laughs> Good for some of you, I suppose. Get a bit of a rumble in your bumble when your buddies are, are talking to you. Okay? So that's, that's the first thing. That's the first thing. Okay. So you set this thing up, right? It's got the, the shaker bit. It's got a cable that runs, so it's a physical cable, it's tethered, and that cable runs from the shaker out along a long cable to an amplifier. Now the amplifier is just a small black box. I'd say it's about the size of like a car radio player, if you were to pull it out. You know, it's like a, it's like a small black box, uh, maybe half the size of like a DVD player, Blu-ray player, that kind of thing. And it just sits there, gets a little bit warm, because there's quite a few capacitors and, and things dumping thermal energy into, into the box and then allowing that to breathe. So it's just like any amplifier. So you connect your shaker to the amplifier, and these come together in the box. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to pair equipment like you would in a DIY scenario when you're building a shaker for yourself or buying some shakers and speaker wire and doing all this for, like, your couch so that you can get that Jurassic Park experience that I mentioned earlier. So let's just stay focused on this. Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what comes in the package? You get the shaker arm, you get the you get the ShamWow, you get the Ginsu knives, <laughs> okay? You get an amplifier, you get the cables you need to connect it. And that's essentially it. You get some other, some like Y splitter leads. What you end up wanting to do is you take a fork, you take a fork off of the splitter, Okay, so you take a fork off of the splitter and you say, okay, whatever my game audio source is, speakers, headphones, okay, you're going to need to feed this thing through a 3.5 mil jack, your standard audio jack, you feed it a splice of that, 
you, speed, you feed it a splice of that. And so it's taking your game audio, and then what is the amplifier doing? The amplifier has a few settings, and you can set it to filter out some of the higher frequencies so it's not shaking when you know the wrong elements in the scene are doing it. But after you set it up once, I'm honest with you, you really don't need to touch it again. You tune it to the low frequencies, right? Really easy, just a little knob. I usually set mine around 60 or 80 hertz so that it doesn't pick up stuff that's in the 120 to 250 range. And, and that's all of your, you know, mechanical vibrations. It's your gunshots, uh, it's your explosions, and it's your bassy friends. I'm sorry, there's no way to filter out your bassy friends. They're just gonna, they're just gonna start, you know, jiggling your, your, your ass before long, okay? That's gonna happen. Just live with it, deal with it. <laughs> I like the side effect, it's fine. Let's me know which friends of mine love me that extra bit. All right, so that's it. That's so that's the butt kicker gamer too. Okay, when I first got it, I thought, Jesus, this thing, Jesus, look at it, it shakes. Now, a warning for you, butt kicker. The butt kicker is not for you if you live in an apartment block and there are neighbors below you to be annoyed by this thing, right? Just don't, just don't even bother buying it. Like it, it it's not. It's not good for people with shared accommodation. It makes a thundering noise, right? I mean, that's that's the whole point of it. It shakes and it booms. It's not noisy itself, but if if there's someone beneath you, right? If there's someone beneath you, they will hear a, a racket like like no other. Like you, <laughs> uh, we have it set upstairs in, in, the, in the downstairs kind of foyer, the entryway to our house. Um, if you're standing there while someone's got the butt kicker on, you know it. Sounds like some kind of thunder. Maybe a prodigy song or something, right? So anyway, the butt kicker is great and absolutely well seated for games where you're seated, like a piloting, like you're a pilot in an aircraft, uh, you're, in, you're in a space game, you're in a racing game, like a Seto. I mean, feeling every little bump, feeling the traction on the road, these are the things that you get out of it. It's beautiful. Really lovely. Really lovely. As I said, so what's the price for that? Um, what's the current price? I think I paid about, probably about 250 pounds or something like that for mine. And it worked really well in the UK. There aren't that many places. I think it was Shaker Center in the UK who sold me mine. And it's something that I would just say is, it's a, it, it's, it's a really nice, it's a really nice, uh, piece of equipment, comes in a medium sized box, similar to what you would get a kind of like an Oculus Rift headset in, you know, that size box. And um, it's easy to set up. I'd say 15 minutes and you're good. The one thing I would note is if you're in a swivelly office chair like I am, the cable, you could run over it. It's a chunky cable. So you're not gonna like, you're not gonna damage the cable, but um, you might want, you know, you, you, you might want to, uh, like I've done, Take one of the arms of your of your chair, and and uh, like plastic tie to the chair. Now it's got a disconnector, so you can kind of disconnect it, and your chair can be free form uh, as you do. And I just wind the cable up and all that. So I don't know, all that kind of stuff. Let's go back. Sorry for the pause there. Okay, we are in it to win it. Uh, how good am I? I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm really bad. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Let's also get rid of the uh, cursor. Full immersion. This is what I'm about. I'm, I'm really about full immersion. Control F8 to turn off your mouse cursor in a set of Corsa. Super worth knowing. Remember, you drop the clutch before the little red lights go off, you will go to the pits. Let's go, boys. Yo, 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 Okay.
Oh, this is it. All right, let's go back to the tactile transducers. What's the second one we're talking about? We're going to talk about the sub pack. So let's say you are in an apartment. Let's say you are more playing things like Onward and Firewall and stuff like that. By the way, these tactile transducers, the butt kicker goes really well with the PC. You can also set it up for a home cinema system. So if you decide, I don't like this effect, I don't like how it feels, whatever, and you can always transfer that somewhere else. You could use that amplifier somewhere else in your house. But because of the nature of the shaker, because it's kind of a chair lock shaker, I would say it's not gonna be that useful for you. Oh, bollocks. Uh, it's not gonna be that useful for you, you know, like in a, in, a, on a, in a couch environment. You can't really easily clamp that thing to a couch. It's just not suited for the purpose. So you're really locked into either a gaming chair with like a PlayStation or something, or a PC. I would say the, the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 is a PC related shaker set and you're gonna wanna keep it there, okay? All right, let's go to the Subpack M2. Subpack M2 is a totally different form factor, okay? It's like a backpack. It looks like a kind of a chunky hydro pack for anyone who does mountaineering or climbing, okay? It's like a chunky hydro pack. And, and in essence, this hydro pack has a couple of subwoofers in it. And so it's shaking your back. This is used by DJs and music makers, uh, perhaps more so than even gamers. But it has it has a great capacity to enhance your gaming experience. A few things I've, I've noted with it. If you're wearing it, because it covers your back and because it itself gets a little warm, it can heat you up. So if you're in a hot climate and VR is already uncomfortable for you, this probably won't be that nice. I'm not saying that the thing gets hot, but I'm saying that over time, if you're playing for an hour, you know, it'll it'll warm you up. And you might be a little bit uncomfortable about that. That's one of the things that the kind of downsides of the sub pack versus the butt kicker. The butt kicker doesn't touch you, it just touches the chair and then you touch the chair. Everyone's touching everybody. With the sub pack, you wear this thing like a backpack. It again needs an audio source. It can take a Bluetooth audio source but I don't know a gamer who uses the Bluetooth method for them gaming. Maybe that's possible. I don't know. Um, that sounds really great, because then it would be wireless. But the way I do it is I have a long, kind of, bungee, spiral audio extender. There's a 3.5 extender. It goes, I don't know, 10 feet or something. And I use that in conjunction with my wired headset and my wired headphones. So actually, I have three wires coming to me from my PC, and it doesn't bother me. Like, I, I don't mind wires, because they, they mean consistency of, of service, support, audio's not breaking, all that kind of stuff. Like, it, it works really well. So, you know, in, in those terms, I would say the, the, the applications where the sub pack does a, an amazing job, things like, Things like having audio for Farpoint, right? Farpoint is uh, an amazing FPS, okay? So Farpoint is a, is a great example. I played that through eight hours. Uh, the subpack has battery. It's an internal battery and you charge it up. And it'll last about seven hours. But it lasted me the entire game of Farpoint. And obviously the, the battery life will differ based upon based upon how much... based upon how much you uh, you crank it. I usually use it at about, I don't know, 85, 90%. Hey, this guy's giving me a little bit of a love tap. Oh, music games like Electronauts and uh, any music games, Beat Saber, really, really, really um, benefit from a sub pack. I mean, you get into the music like, oh my god, nothing else. It's like being in a club and just having the music pumping. So you got it in your ears, you got it in your body, and it just feels amazing, <laughs> like, so good. The price of the sub pack is a bit, is a bit higher. I think it's about $350. Um, I bought one used for 100 off, and it's been beautiful since I got it. Um, so maybe look for a used deal. Of course, then it's a bit of a mixed bag. 
But I, I gotta say, well worth the money. Still using it three years later, and as I'm as 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 is the purpose of this video, I want to help convince you that this is a game changer. It just makes a whole heap of difference in terms of playing these games and getting the most out of them. Playing Alien Isolation, getting jumped while while you got this thing on you. Oh my god, I tell you. The impact is 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 astounding at how how much this I wonder where that guy was. I was like he's not in my rear. Where is he? He's not in my rear. Where could he possibly be? Sir, gentlemen, sir, the internet's gonna love that one. All right, let's see what we can do. Nice and tight. Okay, so we've covered the tactile transducer. What it is? Basically, a shaker device. We've covered the butt kicker gamer two, which is a seated device for around about three hundred bucks. Comes with an amp. Comes with a shaker. Then there's the kind of standalone backpack equivalent which is good for standing and standing experiences, room scale, which is the Subpack M2. And that has uh, that has an excellent profile for FPS games, action games, anything with shooting or explosions. I've played Subnautica with that and it's amazing when the Aurora kicks off. So is the so is the the butt kicker, uh, to be honest. So depending on if you're standing or, or seated, I would pick one or the other. Just like the be true to yourself and say which games which games do I play more? Right, what do I what do I frequent? And then decide what you're going to go for. Subpack is nice because it's it's quiet. It doesn't uh, doesn't shake the house, it just shakes you. Just shakes you. Uh, almost makes no noise. Almost no noise. Not completely silent, but it's you know, when you got headphones on or whatever, you're not gonna hear it. So you're, it, but the level of immersion it gives you, my god. Like fear games, any kind of horror game. Dread Halls or Monster Alien Isolation, Subnautica, Resident Evil. Any of those games are augmented with one of these things. And let me tell you, the fear factor is, is pumping. Like it is nasty. Definitely nasty. So anyway, look, we've gone on long enough maybe. Uh, this is something I wanted to, I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention because I don't see enough coverage about this. And when you're asking yourself the question, you know, what is, how can I get, how can I get more immersed? I'm into this VR thing. How can I do more? How can I do more? What would be Zim's number one tip to actually get more out of my VR gameplay? And the answer is transducers. Okay. So this is the first, this is the first of our of our Sunday Drive series. Uh, I just want to thank the people who encouraged me to go ahead with this project because I think it's something that uh, will benefit, will benefit some uh, who like to kind of have a, an open-ended conversation. If you do have questions about it, I will monitor the comments and respond back to you. So if there's anything that I've made unclear um, and you'd like to correct or additions, additional equipment that you might use that others should know about. Please share your experiences. Both of the pieces of equipment I talked about today are not new. They are several years old each. Um, and there is a newer version of the Subpack, the sub Subpack M2X, which was made available earlier this year. And I would recommend, if you're gonna go for a Subpack, that's the one to go for. Now, if I was to ask, be asked which is the better deal, uh, which is an overall winner, I would say sub pack over the butt kicker simply because of the area effect. If you have a wife, a girlfriend, a husband, right? And you get one of these things and you're shaking away at midnight, as I have done. You're gonna wake your kids up, you're gonna piss off the neighbors, and eventually you'll have a shotgun in your face. Nobody nobody needs that. <laughs> and that's just from the wife. Know what I mean? So like, shakers, shakers are good. A more personalized shaker is also good. And the subpack, it's got a feature that I, I'll be honest, I don't use it for regularly. But again, you could Bluetooth your music to it, and you can walk around the house or whatever listening to it. I don't recommend taking the subpack, wearing it on your chest, and walking into an airport. Let's just say that would, that would, you wouldn't live very long. 
security would, would definitely have a problem with the way you looked. But as a device, and something that if you don't know about, this is something you've got to know about. you got to know about shakers and tactile transducers. Now, uh, finally, before we wrap it up, okay? I want to tell you about a resource that I've been building and growing for the last couple of years. Um, it spawned from our Should I Buy video series, which I did stop doing. I did stop doing. Um, because I found that I'm not, a, I'm not a day one reviewer. That's not where I'm interested in putting my time. I'm also not interested in in critical perfection in video edits. Not interested in that. It takes a lot of work. Those guys have a lot of skill, and they, I'm glad they can do it. That's not my that's not my arena right now. I want to have a real conversation. I want to improve my own talking skills, public speaking, coherent knowledge being imparted onto people who are willing to listen. So. I wanted to try something different. So this is a new project. But that Should I Buy project spawned something off that I'm using to this day, which is a an archive of all the VR games I've played. We're past 700 games now. They're all scored against 12 categories, one of which is tactile. So if a game responds well to either the sub pack or the butt kicker, um, and I would say compatibility between the two is shared. Oh! Fuck, thought we had him. Damn it. Um, <laughs> and he disconnected. Yeah, best of um, fuck's sake. Look at this, perfect drive all the time. And we, this is life, people. This is exactly what I mean. Not editing that out. Who knew that was gonna happen? We thought we, I was gonna slide around perfectly. That's how it looked to me anyway. So yeah, so yeah. So, so look, you can, you can check out zimtalk5.com Okay, look for, there's a big pink button there that says VR Reviews. Okay, and on the far right side of that big Excel sheet, you'll see Tactile. You can filter on Tactile, filter on the headset that you, that you like. Just bear in mind that the headset listings in there are not a listing of what games are supported by what headsets. That's not what that is. That's a, how did I test it? So my scoring is based on that headset. If it shows PSVR, then I tested the game on PSVR, but it may also be available on Vive, Rift, or other headsets like Windows Mixed Reality. Okay? But tactile support, if I've given it the stamp of approval, it's in there, and you will see the kinds of games that I feel sing loudly. Electronauts is probably the most recent example of a game that, my god, feels amazing with a sub pack. Of course it does, it's been tuned by DJs and artists and what have you. But there's loads of things, like I said, Beat Saber is one. Subnautica is one. Any horror game. Really any horror game. Most racing games. Um, another, another game that works very well with a butt kicker, it's like Dirt Rally. Excellent VR racing title. Okay. I like Assetto with these as well. One aspect I forgot to mention, I want to mention before we wrap it up, is the sub pack M2. It's a little bit chunky on the back, okay? Think about a, a padded backpack with, I don't know, two or three inches out your back, right? Would that be comfortable with a hardback shell sitting in a chair, like a hardback chair, or even a couch that was a cushy surface? I will say no. So if you're planning to do quite a bit of seated time, my suggestion is to go for a butt kicker, okay? If you're in the unfortunate setup where you're in an apartment, okay, you're in an apartment, you'd like the tactile feedback, um, then maybe you can like sit forward in your chair or get used to it that way. You're really balancing between that and having a butt kicker at lower volume um, and either not getting as good of an effect from it um, or something like that. Okay. One final point, I keep saying final, last point, last point, last point. One final point to mention is you can use these things on full volume. Yes, you can, okay? One of the things I noticed was the sub pack, because it vibrates your back muscles, your back muscles, when you first get into this thing, will tire if you're using it at high volumes. And so it will get to a point where you feel maybe uncomfortable or hot, as I mentioned, and you need to kind of calibrate to that. You need to get used to acclimate, sorry. You need to acclimate to this feeling, this sensation. Um, and later, you'll be able to stomach it, 
at higher volumes uh, for more of a punch. But at the start, you know, you really don't want the thing thumping your kidneys. Okay, so I would just say, go in gentle, take it easy. If you feel like, yeah, this is going well, crank it up over time. And by all means, when you take her out of the box, crank it right up and see how much juice she's got, right? They've got a pretty good punch. Sub so packet full volume, I can't, I can't take that for an hour. Not really. Um, that's about the, that's about the comfort point. I can take it full volume for around about an hour and then I have to turn it, either tune it down or something else. Uh, but I would actually say the happy medium for the sub pack is probably around about 50%. The butt kicker itself, I've only ever used it like, oh god, what? Uh, you know, if, if Windows volume, which drives it, is it like 30 or 40%? And it's at equivalently 80%? That's about where my settings usually sit. There's no bloody way that I could stomach it any heavier than that. The force is just, is, is, is too great. But the people who get the uh, sub pack, Initially, you'll probably be, you'll be like, this isn't that heavy a, a, a feedback. I was expecting Mike Tyson to punch me in the back. Okay, it's not that strong. Um, but it is, I would say it is, it is certainly strong enough for me to be pleased with the purchase. I'd be happy to put down 300 quid again for that. And it's just something that I would, I would recommend you check out. Tactile for me, if, if it's between getting another headset and getting tactile on your existing headset. Uh, so let's say you've got a Rift and you're thinking, maybe I'll get a play PS4 Pro and a Vive, right? Sorry, I've got a Rift, I'm just gonna buy it. No, I've, I've got a PC VR headset and I wanna augment either with a shaker or another headset. That's really a 50-50 split. Uh, the, the additional immersive effect across all of your games, both, uh, both, "Quote unquote 2D and and VR games." Yeah, yeah, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna make that call on your own. <laughs> that's a that's a really hard call right now. The PSV the PSVR, for instance, if you haven't had access to that platform yet, has some amazing titles, not worth missing. Um, what can I recommend here? Rob a bank? <laughs> no, maybe not. Probably die. So don't do that. That's, that doesn't help you. That doesn't help you, game. Uh, but if I was to swing it one way, I would actually say sticking in an ecosystem, bringing in a sub pack, is probably what I would do. Okay. So if I had to buy things all over again, I would first buy a Rift, then I'd buy a sub pack, then I'd buy a PSVR. I wouldn't buy a Vive. Um, I'd buy my Oculus Go, and that would be it. That'd be me happy with my equipment. So, look guys, um, I'm going to leave you there. For those who are interested in what track I've been racing, we, ha we uh, currently host 49 Assetto Corsa servers. You can just type in Zim in the search field and you'll find them. They are up. They've been up for about a year now. And um, it's mixed weather conditions, as you've seen evidenced today. Full damage, again, as you've seen evidenced. Okay. And I'd just like to thank you for joining me on my Sunday drive. Okay. So with that, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for uh, for tuning in. And I will leave you there. Uh, our next episode is going to be about violence. What does that mean? Well, tune in and find out. Until then, thank you very much. My name is Zim. You can find out more information about me and our live stream and F Reality podcast. That happens on Saturdays over at ZimTalk5.com and FReality.tv. Have a good day.